first ladies across the African continent who are expected to converge in Accra for the 7th Africa Conference on Sexual Health and Rights. The event slated for 10th to 12th February is being hosted by the president of the organization of African First Ladies Against HIV AIDS, Laudina Mahama. Over 500 participants representing various stakeholder and constituency groups across the African continent will be attending the conference. This year's event, to be hosted by Ghana, is on the theme Realizing Demographic Dividends in Africa, the Critical Importance of Adolescents and Youth Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights. President of Organization of African First Ladies Against HIV AIDS, Madam Lodina Mahama, will launch a major campaign towards ending child marriages in Ghana. She will raise awareness and Ghana support towards the fight against child marriages. Ahead of the event, First Lady of Ethiopia, Roman Tesfaye, and Kenya's First Lady, Margaret Kenyatta, have arrived in the country. About 10 African ladies are expected at a conference. Well, ending child marriages in any society really mainly depends on initiative and laws to protect the rights of these children. What measures are in place to safeguard the rights of girls in Ghana who are mostly forced to marry below the age of consent? Let's get onto the telephone lines now. Bright up here is a child rights expert and also executive director of the Child Rights International. He's joining us now on telephone. Good afternoon, sir, and thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. So, how much of a problem really is child marriages in Ghana? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big one uh, because you look at the statistics that have been produced by UNICEF and also the, the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection. It yeah, clearly shows that uh, it's an issue that we need to deal with. And uh, the multiple effect that comes with it, for me, it should be the focus. So, one we are able to deal with child marriage issues. I think that we'll be dealing with a chain of uh, mm. activities that we will hold as a result of this intervention. So what are some of these multiple effects you refer to? Yeah, well, the right the right of children to education uh, is one big issue because uh, if you look at the statistics that we have, most of them do not even have access to education and uh, because they are going to, uh, to sell someone, uh, they do not even have access to education. Uh, the other one has to do with the social protection component of it, as whether uh, the child is ready uh, to marry and perform the duties that goes with it and all that. So it leaves a whole lot of uh, issues that we need to deal with, especially when it comes to uh, whether the child is in a position to take care of. Mm. A child that would also result as a matter of the uh, of, of the marriage and all that. Yeah. So clearly, these issues we need to deal with, uh, so that we'll be able to place it in the context. So far as children issues are concerned, mm. now, I know that. Mm. Issue, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Carry on, please. Yeah, the major issue that we need to deal with is how we can conform to legislative framework that we have. You know, because the law provides that. The child must marry at the age of 18, and there's a contending issue of culture that we need to deal with also in the country, and that mm. has cut across the region that we find ourselves in. So these are issues that we need to deal with. So if you are enforcing the law and there's a cultural barrier, how then do you deal with those issues in order to pave way for the law to rule and all that? So we need to also think about all this and ensure how best we can define the, the, the right environment for the well-being of children. Mm. I know that uh, conferences of this nature uh, bring a platform where people talk a lot of rhetoric. Beyond that, what practical ways do you think the problem can be addressed? You've already told us the need to uh, limit the cultural influences that promote these things. But what else? Now, what if you look at the caliber of people who are attending the meeting? I think that uh, implementation is very key. Mm. And if you want to implement the program, then the commitment from from the, the the government of the various countries that are coming should also show that in terms of the budget allocation, in terms of the the technical support that they will give to the program. Because I know that uh, UNICEF has supported them to do a lot of research. And now it is time for us to look at the outcome of the research and see how best we can implement it on the field. So for me, that is the, 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 the first step that we have to take because they have given resources, but I think that government must also make certain commitment to respect to how
how they want to deal with the issue. And if there is anybody who who is at fault in relation to marrying a girl who is below the age of 18 years, how then practically can we deal with the issue? Those are the commitments that we want to see to, to make people know that you cannot take the girl child for granted. Because at the end of the day, if the girl child is not educated, there's a possibility that that child will not be able to take care of the family even when they are, they are married and all that. So the commitment is very, very key. And the implementation in terms of resource and technical support must also be there. Thank you very much, uh, Bright Appear. Thank Bright, you, uh, Thanks for your time. Bright Appear is a child rights expert.